All right. Hello, everybody, again. I'd like to welcome y'all to my my new office. I took a uh, a new job over the winter with a different company. So I'm still in there, Tractor 802. This is a 2019 model, which is uh, about the same as I was flying. In all my other videos, that was a 2018 model, my old ones. And I'm about to go fertilize some wheat here. You know, what I'm doing right now, I'm running a, I've got an auger in my hopper. Because the 802 has got two separate uh, hoppers. And I've got a auger right up there. So when the fertilizer gets up to the top, it'll push it both directions to the front and to the back. I've got bull now. I'm going to roll up here. I had not taken off yet or hadn't flown yet today. So I've got to pull up here and i got to cycle the prop a little bit to get all that cold oil out of the prop hub. And I'm not working off a municipal airport anymore. I'm not back on a uh, regular old ag strip. Probably 25 foot wide, maybe. Maybe 20 foot. It's uh, 2,200 feet long, just about. Um, you'll see up here there's a different color concrete at the end. It used to be 1,600 feet. And I bet you I've got 5,000 pounds of fertilizer, uh, urea, which is nitrogen. And ammonia sulfate. And uh, we've got 200 gallons of fuel, 220 gallons of fuel. So I've, I've probably got a 6,300 pound load or so. I'll cycle the prop one more time. And I bet you, what I was saying is, I bet you this plane gets off the ground right about that 1,600 foot mark. Probably weighs, um, oh, 14,000 pounds right now, probably. Maybe a little more, maybe 14.5. Get my GPS set up. I got my all my stuff pulled up here. I'm going to get my... There's the job on my iPad there. All right, rock and roll. So this plane flies a little bit different than my old one. Um, all these planes fly a little bit different. Everybody says it depends on what day that they were finished. Whether Mondays and Friday planes aren't that great. Uh, you want a Wednesday plane, that's what everybody says. You want a plane that got finished on Wednesday. So anyway, we're coming up on the 1600 foot mark. Got a little bit of a, there we go, yep, yeah, about 1600 foot. Now I do have about a 12 to 15 mile an hour quartering headwind. Wind's coming out of the southwest, I just took off to the south. So it's going to push me around here pretty good. This wheat field I'm flying over right now is one of the ones I've got to fertilize today. And uh, right now we're going to go out to this one that's a little further out. It's going to be a windy, bumpy day today. All part of the job. Good thing I'm wearing my Harley Davidson sweatshirt today because I'm, I'm feeling extra badass right now. Got a uh, tractor digging ditches over here. It's a good indication of what the wind's doing. If you can see that guy right there. You can watch that dirt blowing away. Uh, we look at stuff like that all the time, especially when we're spraying liquid. You know, flags, uh, you can look at water and tell which way the wind's blowing. Um, you know, stuff like that, dirt, you know, people light fires all over the place out here in the country. Uh, all that stuff is a good, useful tool uh, for figuring out what the wind's doing. We've also got a smoker on the plane that, that burns uh, smoker oil like they do at air shows. Uh, and that's also a a uh, really, really good tool that we use a lot. I'm coming up on my field. It looks like it's this dude right up here. So I've got a wind from the southwest. I'm going to start on the east side of the field. So if there is any fertilizer dust that decides to stick around, I won't fly through it. But on a day like today, that stuff's going to going to be gone before I get back. So. I'm not done this field, even though I'm fertilizing, I'm going to be up high, I'm just going to have a quick look at it. You know, we got to check for the the usuals, make sure nobody's out here working in this field, and uh, make sure there's no towers. This is a new area for me, I'm about uh, 50 miles south of where I've been working the last five years. Um, so I do need to be extra careful, 
and make sure I check everything out real good because I've not been to many of these fields uh, before and the only ones I've been to before are ones that I've already done this year. So everything looks pretty good there. Just gonna set up a racetrack pattern on this dude. We're doing uh, 200 pounds to the acre. My slot width is 78 feet for this. Got a baby this dude around. This plane's a, it's a little tail heavier than my last plane. It's a little heavier in general. I've got to fly it a little bit differently. Um, you know, when you sit in a plane as long as we do and, and make, you know, thousands of takeoffs and landings every year, you get pretty in tune with your equipment. So I'm going to set my line up right here on this ditch. The wind is blowing from this way. to adjust the trim on my uh, fertilizer system there. You know, you, uh, on this system, it's new. You've got to select profiles, and they've got a certain gate opening for every profile, so I've selected my 200-pound my profile. They're not exact, so I've got to use this little trim switch because it's it's a little bit heavy. If I just let it go, it, it'd put it out at, uh, more than I want it to. And I did a bunch of 200-pound work yesterday, so I kind of kind of know now where the where the tr trim switch needs to be for 200 pounds at 78 feet. I'm going to run over to the other end of this field here. I'm going to lay my, uh, my C line and close my pattern over here. And uh, on this pass, I'm going to ideally want to hang out a little bit on the outside uh, because of that wind. However, that other side of the field's not quite parallel with this side. We'll make it work. So yeah, when you get wind, you want to hang over a little bit. If you're, you know, if your field is upwind, you want to be on the outside of the field a little bit to make sure the, the product uh, lands on the edge of the field and not inside the edge of the field. Kind of a tricky game because some uh, some farmers don't like it when there's fertilizer on the road, and some of them uh, understand that uh, in order for us to get the full rate on the edge of the field, there's going to have to be a little bit on the on the outside of the field too, because our pattern doesn't put out full rate all the way out to the edge like that. Like I've got a swath width of 78 feet. Well, my my fertilizer is probably spreading out 90 feet. However. 78 feet of that 90 is my target rate, and then the outsides are going to be a, a bit lighter. So I'm doing, I'm only going to do about 25 acres of pass, maybe 26, and I'm probably going to run out on this pass here. It'll, it'll go pretty quick. And we're getting pretty low. And there's my gate right before the end of the pass. And uh, since we've got this big wind, I'm not going to land downwind on this little strip. I've only probably got 30 or 40 hours in this uh, particular airplane. And uh, although I could land it downwind, it's risky. Um, I'm not going to take that risk uh, because there's not really a point right now. You know, I'm not trying to wreck this plane into their hangars, you know, on my first month working for these, <laughs> these guys. Also, it's kind of scary landing downwind on a small strip with a plane you're not super, super comfortable in yet. Uh, landing towards a bunch of stuff like that, just that's a whole lot of stuff at once. So we're just not going to do it. So on fertilizer, I run uh, high power settings. Uh, I run about 3,600 pounds of torque uh, at 1570 on the prop. That's pulling quite a bit of power. Um, speed is definitely your friend when you're fertilizing. Uh, because it's all air driven, uh, the plane, we drop fertilizer down into the spreader and the airflow spreads it out. And so the more airflow you get to the spreader, the better it's going to fan out. So I always try to keep my airspeed as high as possible uh, when I'm putting out dry uh, material. So we're coming up on the strip here. I have to land right over the top of these uh, open bay hangers here. There's a windsock on this building to the left. Uh, looks like an old grain elevator or something. Um, and you can kind of see what the wind's doing if you can see that. There's Nick taking off. I'm going to have to. I'm going to go ahead and make a circle. Definitely, definitely could have set it down behind him, but 
like I was saying earlier, we're not in a hurry today, but I'm going to have to shut down and wait on more fertilizer, so we'll just, uh, we'll just make us a nice circle. This is a downwind circle, too. I'm doing about 100 on the airspeed. Here, we'll come back around. You don't want to, you don't want to be jockeying this thing doing, doing a downwind slow turn like that. All right, now it's our turn. We get all my flaps in here. We got all the flaps in. The airspeed's about 105 right now. I like to be about 80. Coming across the top of these, I'm going to be a little faster than that today. Uh, but we got this big wind, so it's not a, not going to be a problem at all. And I'm, I've got to go all the way down to this 1600 foot point to turn around anyway. One thing about this particular plane, it doesn't set down like my other one did. This one wants to keep flying. My other one, as soon as you know, I three-pointed on the ground, that dude was stuck there. This guy likes to dance. And as a tailwheel pilot, um, you got to know how to dance. I'm going to pull him back up here and get us another load. Keep rocking and rolling. As an egg pilot, it, it is frustrating having to land like that and then turn around and taxi all the way back because we like to just come in and, oh, God dang it, my tailwheel, freaking tailwheel popped over. All right, that's why we have tailwheel.